Tutorial Tuesday with Crafting Cousins. Let's craft, y'all! Hey, y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use Dollar Tree placemats to make a tobacco basket. I have wanted one of these for so long, but I just could not convince myself to pay the price. This is one project that has been on my mind for a while. I couldn't figure out what I could use in place of the oak strips. I was in Dollar Tree yesterday and saw these placemats and an idea was born. I wanted three quarter inch strips, so I took my ruler, marked my placemat, and drew my cut lines. Then I grabbed my scissors and started cutting. I cut up three placemats, but I only ended up using two and maybe a fourth of the third one. These cut very easily with just my cheap scissors. I wanted to make my vinyl look like wood. I have watched lots of creators paint a faux wood finish on different surfaces, so I decided to just go for it. I didn't have any brown chalk paint and I felt like acrylic wouldn't stick well on its own. I took some of my Waverly Ivory chalk paint and mixed it with the burnt umber acrylic paint I had on hand. Y'all, I'm not going to lie, this project just about did me in. The paint looked very flat and scratched easily. I did have the thought that I should have probably used spray paint for the base but I didn't have any on hand and didn't want to go all the way into town to get some, so I just hoped for the best and kept going. I wasn't feeling how it looked, so I decided to walk away and come back in the morning. I literally dreamed about this project all night. When I came back to the project, I knew I needed to give the paint some depth. I took my black chalk paint and a stencil brush and lightly dry brushed a little over each strip. Then I came back in with my Valspar antiquing wax, and that is when this project started to turn around. I used the stencil brush and applied the wax pretty heavily over each strip. The stiff brussels left streaks that resembled a wood grain, and the wax softened the black paint. This literally started to look like wood strips. I don't think the camera does this justice. I was so excited. I knew I wanted my basket to be square. I started laying out my strips side by side, and then I removed every other one so that I would have equal spacing. I used a piece of tape across the top to keep my strips from moving while I was weaving the cross strips in. Do you like to paper craft? Have you tried making journals? Our sweet friend and craft group member Luann has a channel called The Coastal Crafter that is all about paper crafting. I would love it if you would go over and check her out. She does such beautiful work and I could listen to her talk all day long. She is trying so hard to get to 100 subscribers and she is doing a giveaway. I would love it if we could help her surpass her goal. I will leave a link to her channel in the description box below. Go check her out and let her know we sent you. Once I've got all of my strips woven together, I used a little hot glue on the end pieces to hold everything together and then remove my tape. It did pull the paint up in a couple of places, but I just went back and touched those up easily. I flipped the piece over and added more hot glue at each end. Now I'm going to make the diamond pattern in the center of my basket. I took four of my strips and laid them out to see where they would cross. Once I had my pattern, I just tacked down the strips with some hot glue. At this point, I'm starting to see my basket come to life. Now I just trim off the excess. To make the bands that go around the top of the basket and pull the sides up, I took five of my strips and glued them end to end for each band. I used some clear Gorilla Glue for the permanent hold and some hot glue for the fast hold. 
I started by gluing one of my bands to the ends of my woven piece. When you get to the corner, it gets tricky. I couldn't get the corner pieces to stay in place and pull in enough to give me a little depth to my basket. I played with it a bit to make it round off and I was able to clamp it and it worked much better. Don't worry that your ends stick up past your band. We can trim those off at the end. It is much better for them to be too long than to not be long enough. I just kept working my way around my basket, gluing and clamping. I didn't have to leave the clamps on very long. The hot glue set up pretty quickly. Somewhere around the back side of my basket, I realized that if I bent the vinyl over and pressed, the ends would stand up and it made it much easier to attach the band. You see here that I went back around and bent all of my ends up so that they stood straight up. Now we just glue our second band around the inside of the basket. This gives the edges extra support so that they stand up better and it gives the inside a more finished appearance. When everything was set, I took off the clamps and then trimmed the strips down to the top of the band. Of course, you could see the white vinyl where I had cut, so I took my black permanent marker and went around the edges. This covered everything and it really finished off my basket. I also touched up any scratches that had occurred while I was putting it together. I want to decorate my basket, so I take a little sign I got from Hobby Lobby and use it as a base. I picked up several of the beautiful calendars that they have at the Dollar Tree right now and will use one of the small pictures on the back for my sign. I got this little sign from the Hobby Lobby after Easter when they were 90% off. I'm always picking up signs from there when the seasons change. It doesn't matter what they say because I always redo them. I just saw that the spring line has been marked down to 75% off and they have a lot of signs left. I painted the inside of my sign with my ivory chalk paint. I wanted to make sure I covered the wording so that it would not show through my picture. I got a little paint on the frame, but I just touched it up with my furniture repair marker that I got from the Dollar Tree. Now I just use my Mod Podge to attach the picture, and once it's dry, I use my old eyeshadow to soften the edges and give it a slight distressed look. I grabbed some of the gorgeous sunflowers that I got from the Dollar Tree and picked out a few to use on my basket. I also took some leaves and mini mums that I had left over from other projects. I glued a couple of the leaves to the sunflowers to give them a little more dimension. Then I just started playing around with them to see how I wanted them to lay. Once I had them arranged the way I liked, I just used some hot glue and tacked everything down. I placed my sign at the top of my arrangement and glued it down with a little hot glue. And there's my tobacco basket. For something that just about did me in, I absolutely love how it turned out. stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring that bell so you'll be notified every time we upload new content. We upload five days a week, offering a variety of DIYs, paper crafting, home decor hauls, and craft show information. I'm sure you will find something you will love with Crafting Cousins. This project is going to be a quick and easy upcycle of a milk can that I picked up from the Goodwill outlet. It's cute the way it is, but I wanted to give it a facelift. I took the sticker and the bow off and gave the can two coats of my Waverly white chalk paint. Even though I got this can from the Goodwill, I know that it originally came from the Dollar General. I was in my Dollar General yesterday and saw that they have some out with their fall decorations. 
I also painted the inside of the rim because I wasn't sure how much would show when I had it on display. I grabbed one of the calendars that I picked up from the Dollar Tree because I knew it had an adorable page that had a creamery print on it. That page was too big for my can, but the back of the calendar has small prints of each page and that one was perfect. I cut it out and then crumpled it up several times to give it a more worn look. I took a sponge and lightly dampened the paper, which helps it to adhere to the round surface better. Then I just took my Mod Podge and attached the picture to the can. To give my can a little more character, I took my black permanent marker and went around the lip of the can. I also outlined the handles, the upper ridge of the can, and the bottom ridge. I liked how it made my can have an enamel feel. I took my old eyeshadow palette and my stencil brush and gave the piece a lightly distressed look to make it appear more aged. Now I want to add some of my fall florals to my can. I took some foam, cut it up, and placed it in my can. Then I just started adding my flowers. Kay calls this poking posies. You just keep poking things in until you are happy with how it looks. And there's our milk can in its new home. I like this one a lot and I think it fits in with my other decor perfectly. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you like, we hope that you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all. We would love to have you tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Tutorial Tuesdays, either Hump Day Hauls or Wednesdays, Trash to Treasure Thursdays, and finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturdays. See you tomorrow!